So through these past four lectures on unicons, we've looked at a ton of different organisms, ranging from very simple to very complex. But one organism that we've kind of left out here uh, is us as humans. Where do we fall under this broad look at animal diversity that we've gone through in the past four lectures? What we can understand to initially look at humans is to scope ourselves in terms of what we've already covered. We know that we're chordates because we have all of those big four chordate characteristics in our development at some point, uh, at one point or another. We also are tetrapods because we live on land. We like to walk. Uh, we're certainly not within water anymore. We are amniotes because we have a certain, again, amniotic stage within our development that's seen within the womb as we're developing embryonically. And more specifically, we're classified as mammals because of those mammal characteristics we've covered already as well. Now we can get into the nitty-gritty details of where humans fall under all of this by now subclassifying our mammalian characteristic with what type of mammal we are. And we are going to be classified as very truly eutherians. Again, we've looked at eutherians before, but just to reiterate, we're classified as such because eutherians are placental mammals. That means there's a placenta. A placenta is a point of exchange between the developing embryo and the mother. That's going to be seen in us 110%. So that complex exchange system is definitely present within us. And also, this usually leads to a much longer pregnancy compared to others, about nine months. It's a decently long time, leading to great embryonic development. All of this classifies us as eutherians. Now what we want to do is go even further than that. How can we further classify humans on this big picture of animal diversity? Furthermore, eutherians, let's say, can be broken down into what are known as primates. Now, primates are something you've probably heard of before, uh, and classic examples of primates include lemurs, monkeys, apes, chimps, and even us as humans. But uh, what I want to make sure we understand is where we are in this big picture of animal diversity. Primates specifically will not be part of the domain. They're not part of the kingdom. They're not part of the phylum. They're not part of the class, but they are part of the order. And we'll just finish this off just for sake of completion. A specific order of organisms is known as the primates, and this is where we fall as well as humans. But that's when we get into family, genus, and species as we move forward. So when we look at primates, we have to understand a couple of things that make primates primates, thus make us humans as well underneath this umbrella that is primate. So what can we state about primates that are what are known as derived traits? These are very specifically uh, going to be seen within the primate order of organisms. The derived traits to be aware of in primates uh, are the following. Compared to other organisms, primates have relatively large brains, and this is true for all primates, no matter how uh, smart or how uh, unintelligent you think somebody is. Uh, this large brain category is definitely seen within all primates. Another characteristic, this one's a little tough to tell, but again, this is based off of a comparison to other organisms. We have relatively short jaws. In addition, primates are going to have what are known as these really nice, really useful grasping hands and feet. Uh, and this is what's allowing me to write so nicely. And speaking of that, uh, more even more evolved than this grasping hands and feet idea would be the fact that if we look at some higher order primates, ones that are more recently evolved, like monkeys and apes, let's say, these actually have uh, something known as a fully opposable thumb. So we'll write that down as with fully opposable Thumb. This is just like the thumb you and I have. It's capable of doing complex maneuvers and mechanisms, holding things strongly, firmly, or softly, writing a letter, uh, or typing an email, whatever it may be. This idea of an opposable thumb is seen uh, within primates, but specifically the monkey and ape uh, lineage and divergence. Uh, in addition, uh, primates will also have forward-facing eyes. This is going to be sort of important when we start talking about what makes primates these complex organisms. They actually look at each other a lot more than any other organism because of this uh, forward-facing eyes idea. 
In addition, primates exhibit increased parental care. Again, this is all in comparison to other organisms. Lots of parental care. A primate will not leave its newborn infant to just fend for itself. There will be a certain amount of parental care that's considered high as compared to others. And finally, primates will exhibit, uh, generally speaking, what we can term complex social behavior. Now, this is a very broad idea, the idea of social behavior, but we can get into these details when we start looking at human traits uh, in just a second. So these are the basic derived traits of primates. What I want to work further into now is humans. Primates are, of course, going to allow for humans to be classified under that umbrella. But what makes humans humans? And in order to understand that even more specifically, what we have to look at is a broad scope understanding of human evolution as a whole. So human evolution will, of course, encompass these primate-derived traits, but I want to work through this journey uh, of getting to this level that is Homo sapiens. Now, in order to understand this, we have to look at what we currently have on Earth. And currently on Earth, we have a very close living relative. Our closest living relative is going to be a chimpanzee. Closest living relative is equal to the chimps. So the chimps are a specific type of primate that is on Earth today as a living relative, our closest living relative. However, please, 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 please understand this. However, but humans, this is very important, it's a common misconception, did not, and it's a very bad way to say this, evolve from, and I'll put it in quotes because this is not something good to say, did not evolve from chimps. This is nonsense. If you say this to an evolutionary biologist, they will laugh at you, and rightfully so. So why are they our closest living relative if we didn't technically evolve from chimps? What does this even mean? Simply speaking, what you need to understand is that we simply only share a common ancestor with chimps. Okay? A common chimp-like, human-like, primate-like ancestor that is shared between us and chimps. However, we diverged from this common ancestor, us and chimps, about six to seven million years ago. So this is a lot of time for evolutionary outcomes to further develop, to further take place, that increase our divergence away from chimps. That's why it's not fair to say that we evolved directly from chimps. There's six to seven million years of evolution that occur in our divergence from this chimp common ancestor that we may have. So that's the idea to really drive home there. So now let's look at specifically what it means to evolve in the context of humans. What we need to understand is this idea of hominin. These are going to be very much human-like organisms. We can classify and define hominins as species on what would be considered the human side Okay, the human side of that previously mentioned human-chimp divergence. So remember, six to seven million years ago, we have that human-chimp divergence. What happened to those organisms that were on the human side of that divergence? So if we imagine we have this common ancestor, chimps start to evolve and develop on this side, and then we have a divergence. This is where we are as humans over six to seven million years ago. And this is where chimps would be. As we go along this path, we're going to see many different hominins, species on, look at this, the human side of the chimp, human chimp divergence. Uh, we can classify anything as a hominin because we know that they are all from Africa originally, so this is the out of Africa model of human evolution. Uh, so we'll write that down, important to note. So all from Africa originally. Uh, in addition, what I want you to make sure you understand is that Homo sapiens, by the way, that's us if you didn't know already, uh, are the only living hominin. We won the battle between all other hominins. We are the only living hominin on earth. It would be kind of interesting if we had other hominins, but there are no longer any other hominins. 
on planet Earth. So what happened? If we're the only living hominin, that means all the other ones went extinct. And that's exactly what happened. The others are extinct. So unfortunately for them, these lineages over here, they died out. They ex went extinct, whereas we are very much living pretty well today. So what do we mean by the extinction events? Things that went extinct, uh, some to know, uh, would be uh, the first one, very tough to spell, so I want to make sure I get this right. It's Australopithecus, uh, and specifically Australopithecus forensis. This is one that went extinct. It was a hominin. It's no longer on Earth. Why is it important? This is actually a hominin that was the first to exhibit a fully upright posture. And that's why it's important to recognize. Uh, another one that went extinct. So I'll just put H for Homo. Uh, this one would be Homo habilis. What does this one have that's unique? Of course, no longer any more Homo habilis. There's nobody that's a Homo habilis walking around. But what made them unique? Homo habilis. Uh, have been known to have uh, the unique capability of handling tools. I believe that this actually translates to handyman, homo habilis. In addition, we also have H for homo and lowercase e, erectus. So let me write this. Homo erectus. This is going to be actually the first hominin that goes out of Africa uh, to leave Africa. So that's a big moment in human history to leave that origin space. Uh, and then finally, we have one that's commonly seen, uh, common not seen, but uh, referred to, and that's Homo Neanderthal. Uh, believe it or not, you're actually not supposed to say this as Neanderthal. This is actually a German word. There's a region called Neanderthal in Germany. Um, so it's actually Homo Neanderthal, uh, but you'll be probably uh, looked at kind of uh, weirdly if you say it like that. But it's important to recognize uh, that that's actually how you say it. So it's Homo Neanderthal. What's so great about these guys? These guys also left Africa. They were out of Africa. But remember, all of these guys, these hom hominins, they all lost. They're gone. They're extinct. They're our relatives, don't get me wrong, but they are extinct and no longer living. We are the only ones to survive based off of uh, about 2.4 million years of evolution I'm talking about. Uh, so now, finally, let's complete our understanding of human evolution by looking at us these very fine and modern and smart uh, and so, so unique and so, so important modern humans. What makes us a modern human? Well, we are, of course, Homo sapiens. So it's important to just hash that out. That actually directly defines to wise man, uh, which may or may not fit most Homo sapiens, depending on uh, who you're speaking to or who you're familiar with. But what's so great about Homo sapiens, wise men? Well, we have big brains. Most of us, no, all of us have these big brains, of course. Uh, we are fully bipedal. This is important. I don't see anybody walking around on all fours. Uh, everybody eventually develops bipedalism, uh, and that's an important characteristic that separates us from many, many other organisms uh, on planet Earth even. Uh, we also have a characteristically small jaw as compared to other organisms. And why is that? That's actually a conserved trait from, look over here, our primate-derived trait. It's a common uh, derived trait that we have between the primate ancestry that we have and then, of course, the modern human uh, outcomes that we're seeing here. Uh, in addition, modern humans have a relatively short digestive system. Again, short is in context in uh, comparison to other organisms. Um, and then finally, I think most important is uh, stuff that you're doing now, that you're doing as a student. Uh, you have the capability of understanding and developing language. You have no idea how complex that is, and that is very characteristically seen in modern humans. We have something known as culture, spreading ideas, symbolic thought, 
and I don't want to get too philosophical here, but these are really like really unique things that nobody else uh, has. And maybe there are remnants of it in other primates or in other species, but nothing to the level and extent of humans to give us this uh, capability to consider ourselves wise men, uh, so aptly named, hopefully, in most cases. So that looks at our human evolution and also uh, the idea of primates. Hopefully through this you get a nice, good understanding of where we stand